As we've looked at in a previous video, a dead cat wind muff can almost completely eliminate noise from your recordings. Sometimes that's not enough though, and with an almost 10 times price increase for a blimp, do you really need one? If you've watched that previous video, this setup will look very familiar. We're using a fan to simulate the effect of wind, and placing a Rode NTG-1 shotgun microphone aimed directly into the fan to see how it reacts. We'll test the microphone without any kind of protection, with the foam windscreen that comes in the box, with an extra dead cat that fits over the foam, then we'll slap on the blimp and test with the blimp alone, and with the dead wombat that goes over the blimp. In addition to these wind tests, I'm also testing the microphone by aiming it at a loudspeaker playing white noise in order to more carefully test how high frequency response is affected by each layer. All right, the results are in. Using our mic with no protection as a reference point, we can see that even just the foam provides 18 dB of reduction, which means we're reducing the wind to close to a quarter of its volume without the foam. Throwing the dead cat on top of that nearly halves that again for a total of 27 dB of reduction. Using the blimp is an incremental improvement with an additional 7 dB of reduction. Interestingly, adding the dead wombat on top of the blimp only gives us one additional dB of reduction, Comes with a blimp though, so can't really complain. Perhaps there's certain situations where it would make more of a difference. When it comes to wind protection, protecting from the wind isn't all that matters. We also care about how the sound we're trying to capture is changed. If we look at a sample of white noise from our mic with no wind protection, we can see it's reasonably flat with a gentle roll off above 10K. Out our foam and the high end just goes away. We're getting significant frequency loss above 6.5k, and the top end of our range is just gone. And adding the dead cat makes it even worse. Our high end roll off is starting as low as 3k now, and we're now down over 10dB at 10k. Based on that, I would assume that our blimp is going to make things even worse, but it's actually not the case. The overall tonality of our microphone is basically unaffected, with no significant loss of high end. We are getting some frequency specific dips at roughly 7K, 9.5K, 12K, 15K, and 18K, but those dips should be less noticeable than a broader loss of frequency. Adding the dead wombat over the blimp does change things dramatically. We're getting a huge dip at 6.8K, and we do see about 5 dB of loss above 12K. Still, I take this over the complete decimation of the high end that our smaller dead cat commits. So I guess that brings us to the conclusion. Should you get a blimp? Well, I can't change the fact that a blimp from a reputable brand is at least $300 and they go up quite a bit from there. That said, blimps are clearly superior to other methods of wind production, and they manage to do it while being more transparent for what you're trying to record. Personally, I think blimps are essential if you're recording outdoors. The fan I use for this test is not particularly powerful and it probably isn't blowing more than about eight miles per hour. Here in the land of the south wind, average wind speeds outdoors are more like 10 miles per hour. And having tried to make do with just the on microphone wind reduction, it's just not enough most of the time. Add to that the fact that with a blimp you're getting a shock mount for reduced handling noise, I really do think that a blimp is indispensable if you're recording outdoors. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you liked this video, if you found it helpful, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this one, hit that subscribe button.